Welcome to Independent VFX. I'm Scott Newman, and in this video, I'm going to cover the basics of getting started with our 3D rifle shell for Element in After Effects. So if you don't have the model yet, it is available now. Check out the links in the description below this video for more information. Right, so to get started, I've got After Effects here with just a HD comp with a black solid. I'm gonna apply Video Copilot Element to that solid. Um, and now if you have purchased and downloaded and installed the model, it should be available through Element in your models list on the right hand side here. If you look inside my models, there it is, Rifle Shell Grungy. Click on it and there is your bullet shell model loaded into Element with its surfaces available for editing or here in the drop down. I'm gonna just go ahead at this point and say okay. So we're just gonna cover a basic setup for getting your bullet shell to a point where you can animate with it and work with it. So right off the bat, I'm gonna come up here to group one and I am going to create a group null. So I now have a group null, which will enable me to control the position and rotation of this bullet shell. If I go ahead here and push R on the keyboard to open up my rotation properties, you'll see if I rotate this, the bullet shell rotates along with it. Uh, what you'll notice now is the bullet shell is rotating around its center point. Now, in real life, when bullet shells tend to come out of ejection ports, they tend to rotate around their bases or the center of gravity here at the back of the shell. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna just set up another null object um, and parent our group null to that so that when our bullets rotate, they do so a little more realistically than what we have here. So let's get on with that. I'm gonna create layer new null object. I'm gonna make it a 3D null. I'm gonna just rename it to bullet control. And I'm gonna grab it here in the X axis. And I'm just gonna slowly slide it back somewhere in this region, you know. You can, you can kind of decide where you want it, but I'm gonna go with somewhere there and zoom back in. What we're gonna do is parent the original group null to bullet control. Now you'll see if I open up bullet control and I rotate bullet control, you'll see we are now rotating around the base of the shell, which is more realistic to the real world. So I'll just reset that. Um, now just to tidy up my project, what I'm gonna do is click on the original group null. I'm gonna just disable its visibility. And I'm also gonna click on this shy layer switch and I'm gonna hide shy layers here. So you'll notice it's vanished now from the comp. If you need it back, all you do is show shy layers over here. This switch will hide it and unhide it. So I'm gonna hide it just to clean up my layers. I know I have my bullet control null. And again, I will just hide its visibility so that all I'm seeing is the bullet. Um, and of course, now you can see whatever I do to this null transfers to my bullet. So now that we've got our bullet rigged, let's go ahead and set up a loopable spinning animation. So I'm gonna start by adding a camera. I'm gonna go layer, new camera. I want a 50 mil camera for this, but you can really use any lens you like. Um, my comp is currently five seconds in duration. I'm gonna make a five second loop. Okay, you'll notice my bullet shell suddenly went all funny. If that happens to you, it's probably because your um, depth of field is on or enabled in the camera. So just say off for depth of field and your shell will come back nice and sharp. So the first thing you'll wanna do in setting up a loopable animation is to get your shell roughly centered in the frame. Um, so let's just bring up this title action safe guide. There's the center of our frame. Um, and you'll see obviously if we rotate our shell now, it kind of rotates away from the center. So I'll undo that. I'll take bullet control and I'm just gonna shift it to the right in the X axis till that center of gravity point is roughly in the center of the frame. Then at this point, I also am gonna just tilt my bullet in the Z axis, probably up by about 30 degrees or so, or negative 30, just to make life interesting. And then let's go ahead and push our camera right in so that our bullet fills up the frame. Somewhere there looks good. And you'll notice now if I rotate my bullet in the Y axis, 
um, it leaves the top of frame. So to compensate for that, we will just move our camera higher around there. I'm going to reset my Y rotation to zero. And if I just scrub through this now, you'll get a sense for how the bullet will rotate. So it's filling the frame nicely without leaving the frame. You can see it's still a little off center. Um, so I could probably just reset this Y rotation, pull my bullet control a little bit over to the right. Let's just do a scrub through of our rotation again. Much better. That's pretty well centered. So let's undo that. And what I'm going to do now is just create keyframes for my loopable rotation. So I'm going to keyframe Y here at zero and zero. And then I'm going to jump forward to the end of my five seconds. And I want it to do one full rotation in five seconds. So for the Y rotation, I will put one revolution. Then the next step is to just shift this keyframe one click out of your work area. So if I go ahead and RAM preview this, you can see what you're getting, a great loopable animation at five seconds. Now, of course, if you wanted to make this faster, all you would need to do is shift your keyframe. So let's say we wanted the same revolution to happen over one second. I'm just gonna jog back to one second pull this keyframe to one second and then step it forward one, click, bring in my work area to one second and RAM preview this and we should have a loopable one second animation. And there you see it. So obviously when you start reaching these kinds of speeds with your animation, this is where you might want to enable motion blur. So you would come down to your element layer, enable motion blur here, enable motion blur for the comp, I'll hit RAM preview again. And there you have a motion blurred shell. Uh, just so we can see clearer what's going on, I'll just place a neutral gray solid into the background. Let's take a look at it now. So we'll take a look at some more advanced lighting techniques in another tutorial. But for now, let's say you were happy with this animation and you just wanted to get a little bit more bling out of your shell. Um, what you can do is come to your element layer and you can apply effect color correction levels or you could use brightness contrast or you could use curves, uh, whatever you fancy. And all I'm gonna do is just crush the blacks a little bit, bring in my highlights, I find this tends to make the shell look a little bit too colorful. So I'm going to also just apply color correction, hue saturation, and I'm going to pull a little bit of saturation out of the mix here. So let's RAM preview that. And there you go. You can see with absolute default settings and a little bit of brightness contrast tweaking, you're getting a really great looking grungy shell that you can of course speed up or slow down. You can have motion blur, no motion blur, depth of field, no depth of field. So as mentioned, I will cover some more advanced lighting techniques, surfacing techniques in other tutorials, but essentially all the other tutorials will build on the techniques you've just seen here. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman for Independent VFX. Cheers.